Praise the Lord everyone. You are listening to Biblical Doctrines Demystified, a special series by Rev. Dr. Y. Raj Das on Sajiva Vahini. This audio series is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple and Google Podcast. Listen, share and subscribe. Dear friends, greetings to you in Jesus' name. The message that I want to place before you is about unfailing compassions of God. Just to bank my message on a particular passage of the Bible, let me read to you from Lamentations, 3rd chapter, verses 22 till 33. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is God. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his yoke. Let him sit alone and keep silent, because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may be yet a hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him and be full of reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. Though he causes grief, yet he will allow though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies, for he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Dear friends, it's a beautiful passage that we can read Jeremiah in the book of Lamentations. There he says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. He was a prophet who was ardently obeying God, and the word of God was in his heart, in his mouth, and the Lord used to feed him the word of God. He said, uh, he, it, like, like a baby being fed, the Lord used to feed him the word of God. That later when the word of God was given to him, he used to imbibe the word of God. The word of God guided him. When he was deviating away from the Lord for some time, the Lord said, if you return, you shall be like my mouth, meaning the whole personality of Jeremiah was the mouth of God. He was a mighty man of God, used by God, and he was a person of tears. He knew about God's sorrows and he, used to, he suffered for the Lord because he was standing for the truth. Problems were there. So in this particular chapter, if you read verses from 1 to 21, he speaks, so he begins like this, I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He suffered a lot for the Lord and also for the people. He knew about it. So if you read the first 21 ch verses of this particular chapter, you may think that he was making a lot of complaints. No. He was trying to contrast about his suffering against the compassion of the Lord. But it was not a murmuring spirit. He contrasted, he contrasted it against compassions of God. Compassion is not condoning sin. Compassion is precise about sin. So Jeremy knew about it. And then when Jesus Christ came into this world, when Jesus began to preach with burden and tears, people began to say, he is Jeremiah. So I look at this particular situation and find a connection between Jeremiah and Jesus Christ. Jeremiah was a man of compassion. He was able to, he was weeping and preaching God's word. His whole life was full of burden for souls. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he also was a person full of sorrow. And he was a man who was acquainted with grief and sorrows. So Jesus was a person who was suffering for the Lord. So we can understand, we follow Jesus, so we can understand this particular chapter, particular passage, because of uh, Jesus who came into this world, and he is able to guide us to do ministry better when we understand how Jeremiah suffered and how Jesus was able to do greater things in, in our lives. So dear friends, I want to just trace through the whole passage that I read to you, like a Bible study, verse 22. It is because of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. The whole humanity had sinned against God. If God throws a particular person into hellfire, nobody can question God. Nobody can question God, because none of us is perfect. So, we are not consumed because of God's grace and, grace and mercy. We should understand it very clearly. So, when problems come in our lives, people begin to ask God, people begin to question God. We have no right to do that. When problems are faced by us, we must understand why those things are uh, happening to us. We must check our own conscience. We can never ever blame God. 
So the word of God very clearly says, his compassions fail not. He is honest. He is, he is full of compassion. It is because of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Dear friends, I have, been, I have known the Lord for the past 49 years. I can still say with all my heart, his compassions are not failing in my life. God is full of compassion. But at the same time, I know my heart. I know God's mercies. I can never ever say I am qualified to enter into heaven because of all that I am doing for the Lord. No, never. So even if God throws me into hellfire, he will be fully justified. Because I am not consumed because of his mercy. We must understand this particular fact. So once when we understand that God's mercies are there for us, we would be in a better position to say that God's mercies are every new every morning. So once when you understand that because of his compassions, we are not thrown away because his compassions fail not, we are alive. And also we will be able to understand that God's mercies are new every morning. God's mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. So verse 23 says, they are new every morning. God's mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. My dear friends, I tell you, we have to have the mercy of God and the grace of God on daily basis. God is faithful in his promises. When God says something, he will never go back up upon his promises. The problem is when we as believers try to follow the Lord, we are not able to understand this particular point that God provides mercies every morning. So God's mercies are new every morning. He never gives us used out or um, I, mean, um, I mean old mercies he will not give. God's mercies are new every morning. Every morning we need God's mercies to overcome the challenges that we face on that, on that particular day. We do not know what is going to happen to us today. So early morning when we pray, we must understand that God is keeping mercy and grace for us. God's mercies are new every morning. He is faithful. But are we faithful in seeking those mercies that God has kept in store for us? You know, after hearing my messages through the television, many people connect with me. They are not able to understand why they are going through sorrow and problem. Some, some homes, insurmountable problems, terrible sicknesses, or maybe lack of money, getting into debt, and a lot of problems are there. Others are maybe there with a lot of goods and everything, but still they have problems. They try to blame others, or they try to blame God. Others may be blameworthy, because others may give them problems. At the same time, nobody can blame God. Nobody should blame God. You know, people try to blame God because they do not understand God's faithfulness. The word of God says, God's mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God's faithfulness is so great. So, once when we understand that God's mercies are there for us on daily basis, we'll go and get it. Simple logic. If you are not eating properly on a particular day, you become tired physically. You become tired. You have to eat daily. You cannot eat food for one week on a particular day. But when, we, when it comes to the point of spiritual life, people neglect it willfully. They feel it's all right. They go to church and let somebody else pray for them. They wanted to receive the blessing. It is not what God wants. God is a methodical person. He organizes everything beautifully. God makes all things beautiful in its own time. So for tomorrow, God keeps a bundle of grace. Unless you ask for it, you will not get it. The grace that is entitled for you, I cannot get it. The grace that is entitled for me, you cannot get it. So dear friends, it is imperative that we understand God's faithfulness and his compassions fail not. God's compassions are new every morning. It is better you wait in the presence of the Lord. If we have this type of habit of praying in the presence of the Lord, receiving grace for that particular day, you will be able to tell like Jeremiah, Verse 24, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. You know, when we can, we can tell others, the Lord is my portion. Now, is your soul telling you that the Lord is your portion? Here, Jeremiah says, my soul tells me the Lord is my portion, therefore I hope in him. See, it's a matter of personal integrity, a matter of personal allegiance to Christ, a matter of personal touch with God. You know it in your own heart that the Lord is there with you. And his compassions fail not. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. Now many people feel that there is no hope. Why there is no hope? Because they have no faith upon God who, whose compassions will never fail. 
If you have faith in God, whose compassions will never fail, you will know that His mercies are new every morning. Then your heart will say, the Lord is my portion. Your soul will say, your, your heart will tell you, the Lord is my portion. So that you can trust in Him. You will have hope on Him. Many people feel that there is no ho hope about future. Sometimes people try to attempt suicide. Why? Because they have no allegiance to Christ. They are not able to come to God through Jesus Christ and receive His presence on a daily basis. So their soul is not able to tell them, the Lord is my portion. Nobody can change God. Nobody can manipulate God's, God's blessings. Nobody can destroy God's blessings when God wants to bless you. But what you need to understand is, you'll have to have this heart cry in your heart. My soul must say, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I, I hope in Him. Now, if you read Psalm 73, verses from 23 to 26, there Asaph says, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me into glory. Whom do I have in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I tell you, my friends, this is a conviction that you should have in your own heart. The Lord is my portion. You know, 45 years ago, when the Lord Jesus called me for his service, I left everything and came for God's work. My daddy had to say, my daddy said, well, I educated you up to MSc, you're leaving everything and going for God's work. I will not give any property. I said, okay, because Jesus said, leave all and follow. And after five minutes of my daddy talking to me like that, I heard the whisper of the Holy Spirit in my heart. I am your inheritance. I can tell you, friends, all these 45 years, I have this joy in my heart to say, my soul declares in my heart, the Lord is my inheritance, his portion forever. And join hands with yes, if I can say, whom do I have in heaven but you? On earth, on earth that is there nothing beside you. In my heart cry, when I cry to God, my heart cries this, Jesus is first priority for me. All of these things are secondary. Jesus and his ministry are the first priority for me. I long to serve him till the last breath. So my soul is able to tell me, the Lord is my portion, so I hope in him. When we have this type of hope on God, 25th verse, there Jeremiah says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. See, when you know that God is your portion, you will wait for him. You will not demand anything from God. You will wait for God's blessing on God's time. God is good, but often people try to blame God. They are not able to understand that they are not that they fail to receive the blessings of God because they are not waiting in the presence of God. So here Jeremiah says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Two points are there, waiting for him and seeking for him. So we have to do our responsibility. God does not want us to be lazy. The word of God says, a lazy man desires and cannot receive anything from the Lord. God is not willing to help lazy people because they are not willing to do what they are expected to do. So God has created us to be creators, creators of something that God wants us to create. So our responsibility is there. So here he speaks about two things, wait for him. Now, I want to refer to Isaiah 40th chapter, verses 29 to 31. God gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Waiting is very important. People often try to do things in a hasty manner, and they fail. They are not able to perform nicely. They are not able to maximize the outcome of what they do. So, dear friends, here the word of God says, Isaiah says, wait. People who wait in the presence of the Lord, they shall fly, uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I mean, young people may fail, but people who wait upon the Lord shall never fail. Now, waiting is kawa in Hebrew, meaning getting end to end with the Lord. Wait in his presence, spend time in his presence in prayer and wait for his time, wait for his own approval of what we have to do. So this waiting is very important. So if you are not a person who can wait in the presence of the Lord, you will not receive full blessings from the Lord. You know, prayer is not like instant blessing. No, God knows what we need, but he wants us to spend time with him so that 
our, we, we will be focused on his own things to know him better and receive the, his own portion. It is not that God stands outside and gives us blessings. Jesus does not stand outside to give us blessings. He comes in as a blessing. He comes in as, comes in as sanctification and also redemption and wisdom. He comes in as these things. All the blessings that God has kept in store for you can be yours when you wait in the presence of the Lord. Now, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. You'll have to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord and then also seek Him. When you seek God with all your heart, you shall definitely find. Jesus very, very clearly spoke in the Sermon on the Mount, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. When we do not do these things, don't expect God to come and bless you. God is not your servant. He is God who created you. He has prepared everything for you. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. He, God is always true to his own word. But when we seek God with all our heart, when we wait in his presence and seek him with all our heart, definitely we will have hope. We'll wait patiently for his own salvation, his own time. Sometimes, you know, we go through problems. We may not know why we go through problems. It is imperative that we come, to, come closer to God without murmuring, without blaming him. Ask God why we have to have these problems. God may teach us not to do certain things. He may teach us to do certain things. There are sins of omission, sins of commission are there. When God tells us to do something, do it. When we do that, you'll definitely be able to understand why these problems come. So when we obey what God wants us to do, some of the problems will go away. Some of the problems will go away. You know, without obedience, don't expect God to do a great miracle. It is, uh, it is false prophets who perform miracles like that. God will not do that. We must be careful to understand why some problems come. So we have to wait in His presence, seek His own face. And then God will talk to us very clearly why we are facing problems. Once we understand this, this situation, we will be able to get victory in our own life. Our whole world is full of evil. We have problems, whether um, we, may be, we, will be, we may be right before the Lord, but still problems will be there. Opposition will be there. When you stand for the truth, definitely people of the lie, people of the world will fight against you. Opposition will be there. And if you had to go through those ordeal and then come out victorious, you'll have to have the presence of God. This is very important. So understand that God's mercies will never fail. So looking at the word of God, this is what I can understand. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now then you will understand that God is my portion and your soul will have that joy. And therefore you will say, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. So, dear friends, we must be able to understand that God has prepared everything for us. At the same time, here, Jeremiah speaks about something that is still more deep. If you read verses from 27 to 29, it is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may be yet hope. Now, when we go through problems, instead of blaming others, Instead of blaming God, we have to sit down and take stock. See, failure is not a total failure. It may be, it, there may be a stepping stone for success. So when you go through failure in your life, maybe in your career or maybe in your personal life, sit down and take stock why these things are happening. So here he says, it is good for a man to bear yoke in his own youth. His problems will be there. He must understand that God has laid it on him. So, many young people, they do their own studies. Some people do not study properly. They go through problems. They do not wait in the presence of the Lord. They are carrying the yoke laid down upon them by the evil spirits. Sometime back, one young girl came to me for prayer with her mother and father. And uh, before that girl came to me, a few months before, the mother met me and said that this girl had a uh, relationship with a boy and they got married, a non-Christian. They got married. And after six months or so, I met this particular girl and she was telling that, I mean, she married a non-Christian. He was not a believer, nothing to do with Christ. It's a registered marriage. Now this girl was telling that she wanted to go for a divorce. I said, why? Initially, romance was so beautiful. And later when they got married, this man began to drink and she tortures her. 
and uses abusive words, so she wants to go for a divorce. I said it is not what God wants you to do. This yoke can be laid upon you by yourself. Satan's yoke is heavy. I tell you, friends, many people enter into wrong, I mean, wrong um, sinful habits. Say, for example, drinking or smoking, substance abuse, I mean, addicted to movies, and also addicted to pornography, wrong relationships. When people enter into this realm, what happens? They enjoy, they feel they're enjoying, but they do not understand it's a yoke, a big yoke that has been laid upon them. Now, Jesus offers a different yoke. So, which yoke, yoke is good? I told this particular girl, if you divorce this man and try to marry somebody, what guarantee is there that that second man who, whom you want to marry will be treating you nicely? If he becomes a more harder person than your first husband, what will you do? This is not scriptural. This is not what God wants. Well, you've done something wrong. Now, humble yourself. Come closer to God. Repent for your sins. Pray to God that God may change your own husband. That's the only remedy. If you divorce this man and try to marry somebody, you will be considered as a second-rate person who has already lost the virginity. Now, this is what you should understand. When you follow the things of this world, you get a yoke. Yoke is so heavy. So Jesus offers a different yoke. Matthew's Gospel, 11th chapter, verses 28 to 30, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I tell you, friends, when you are young, when you go through some problems because of your sins or maybe because you follow the Lord, others may oppose you, you may go through some problems, you may be carrying a yoke. Take it as a positive one. So here Jesus says, you come unto me, don't carry the yoke that has been laid upon you by these things of this world, by Satan. You can remove them when you come to me. He says, I will give you rest. Now when the word of God speaks about rest, the, the Greek word is anapausin. Anapausin means a person who is under tension. Imagine a, a person who is asked to stand on his toe like a ballet dancer. Ballet dancers may do it, but a person is standing on his toe, he can't stand for a long time. His muscles begin to have pain and he cannot stand. Suppose he sits down, he says, ah, I am re I, I'm relaxed. See, that is an opposing. When you're carrying the load from the world, Jesus says, come unto me, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. When you take the yoke of Jesus Christ upon you, you will have this rest in your life. And that yoke is a blessing. Sometimes, you know, when you stand for Jesus, problems may come. Others may not understand. But here the word of God says, 31st verse, For the Lord will not cast us, cast off forever. Though he causes grief, I would not actually agree with that. He will not cause grief. Though grief comes to us, here, I mean, Jeremiah says, Though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. I would rather very clearly say, we go through sorrows or griefs because of our own sinfulness or maybe because of our own uh, disobedience. It may be, the causes may be there. Sometimes when we go through grief, it may be an edifying factor. So it is always imperative that we carry the yoke when we are young. You know, I can just tell a few points about my experience as a young person who was carrying yoke. So when I was uh, having a lucrative job opportunity and opportunity to do my doctorate in zoology as uh, in, in my career, Jesus said, don't do it. He called me for his service. I left everything and came for God's work. I came and joined the Bible College. And uh, that's, that particular organization, I mean, they were preaching God's word, good organization on one side. On the other side, when people who come for ministry, they would be treated, they were treated like, like bond slaves. That was how they treated me. So, a lot of problems were there, but I kept my mind on God. I kept my mind on the things of God. I never wavered backwards. I never went backwards. I never um, felt sad. Oh, why I came for God's work? So, dear friends, I wanted to do the best for the Lord. So, I was a person who can do a lot of work. I was a jack of all trades, okay? I can do a lot of work. So, beginning from um, cooking to gardening to digging well and also building buildings, masonry work, uh, carpentry was my hobby. Was my hobby. I used to do a lot of work. 
So in that particular organization, I used to do a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. I used to do it with joy. You know, say for example, one ton, I mean half a ton of firewood. I'll just, in no time, I'll just split it. So one day as I was working like that, there was a wound in my left, uh, there was a muscle um, tear in my, under my left arm. I had to go for surgery and problems were there, but nobody took care of me. Only the brothers who were with me took care of me. In from that organization, nobody took care of me. Now that time I was digging a well and I was, um, the, the rock was uh, shale, rock was there. I was using a chisel and a uh, hammer when I, was, um, when I was hitting it to break the rock. A small piece of iron from steel from that hammer went into my calf muscle. Nearly one inch it went in. I had to undergo operation. And it, even when I was there bedridden, only one brother brought eight oranges. Nobody else helped me. Nobody else did anything for me. I know the yoke that I carried when I was young. What kept me going was love for the Lord and love for souls. One day when I was working in a well, deep down and cleaning a well, a big pillar came and fell upon me. I mean, it was about to fall upon me since I was a goalkeeper in my college days. Instinctively, my hands came up. I held it and then um, diverted the fall. I'm still alive. It's a very big pillar. What I'm trying to say is, it is always better to carry the yoke when you're young. I became very strong in my spirit. Two things kept me going. Love for the Lord, love for souls. Even at this age, I, am, I rejoice to serve the Lord. So dear friends, here, uh, here Jeremiah says, it is better if, you know, that we carry the yoke. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. And then he says, let him sit alone and keep silent, because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may be yet hope. Let him give his cheek for a person who hits him. You know, I've been insulted by people for no reason. But I always learned to be humble before the Lord. I learned positive lessons when these things came. So dear friends, what I want to tell you is, God loves you. God's mercies are new every morning. His compassions fail not. And your heart will be able to say, the Lord is my hope. The Lord is my portion. Your heart will be able to say, whom do I have in heaven but you? And on earth I desire nothing beside you. He shall guide me with his counsel and at the end receive me into glory. If you have this type of attitude on God, when you know that God's mercies are new every morning, you will never stumble and fall. You, you may face problems, yokes may be there, problems may be there, but still you will stand up for the Lord as a victorious person. So dear friends, may I encourage all of you to love the Lord with all your heart and obey Him with all your heart. God has kept everything for you in eternity. See, in this world, when you are involved in the ministry, problems will be there. But the question is whether the problems come to you because of your sin or disobedience or because you are doing the right thing, you should understand. We all make mistakes. I made mistakes. I humble myself, keep my, my conscience clean. Then I move forward in faith because God has called me. I'm able to know my call and election in a very clearer manner. So dear friends, God's mercies fail not. It's because of God's mercies we are not consumed. And God's mercies are new every morning. He is faithful. Are we faithful in following Him? Shall we look to God in prayer? Our loving Heavenly Father, I pray for all these dear people who heard your word today. Let them not simply try to follow the Lord without obedience. God's mercies are new every morning. You are faithful always, O oh God. Help us to understand your faithfulness and help us to love you with all our hearts. And I pray that you may keep, give grace to all these dear friends, brothers and sisters, young people, everyone, to know you better. Let them wait in your presence, O oh Lord, and receive your joy in their own hearts more and more. If, when they go through problems, let them understand why they have to go through problems. You will never allow us to suffer beyond a level. level. So, Lord, I pray that you may lay your hands upon these people. Bless everyone, O oh Lord. Bless everyone. You are able to, Lord, lead us into greater victories in our future. Lead us and guide us, O oh Lord. I give you all the glory. Let me have the joy in serving you. In Jesus' almighty name I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you, friends, this day and every day to come.